You ready, Peter? We're good. Great. Um, guys, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Wethersfield Reopen um, Forum, if you will. Um, before, just a little bit of um, bookkeeping. Um, according to the Governor's Executive Order 7B, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, so I want everybody to know that the comments and whatnot here will be public record. Um, we are um, going to be handling the restaurant portion in, uh, from 2 to 2.30. Uh, we're going to do salons from 2.30 to 2.45. This may float a little bit depending upon uh, what we need. Uh, and then offices and retail after that. Um, uh, and with that being said, Pete, um, everyone there, if you can keep yourself on mute, and it looks like everybody is being good um, already. Um, until you're ready to share something, um, please keep yourself on mute. That minimizes uh, any potential feedback uh, for the group. Um, so welcome again. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see there's a number of people here. Um, the, the main goal uh, of today's meeting, and if you can go to the next slide, Pete. The main goal of today's meeting really is uh, communication uh, and action is really what we're looking for. Um, uh, I think, uh, there we go. Um, on the call today uh, is our mayor, Mike Rell, town manager, Gary Evans, Pete Gillespie, uh, who's at the helm uh, of this PowerPoint, Anthony Dignati, our fire marshal, Steve Laterulo, our building official, Charles Morrison, our zoning official, Derek Greger, town engineer, Barbara Gigliotti uh, from the health district and Deb Raymond of the Chamber of Commerce. And I'd like to, uh, before I begin, thank Peter for helping to organize this and Deb uh, uh, for your help on this uh, as well. Next slide, Pete. Um, what is open uh, right now, and as a matter of fact, before we get started, um, I think I'd like to be, uh, to just give some time uh, to the mayor, if you'd like to share a few things. Uh, and also to Gary Evans, uh, our town manager. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Sure, thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks for being on. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of going day by day with the uh, um, issue right now. Getting executive orders, uh, they've kind of slowed down a little from the governor's office in the last couple of weeks, uh, but now that the reopened CT uh, group has met and, and put out their report, uh, it's kind of fallen on the shoulders of, uh, of municipalities, and we've got great folks on uh, the call today uh, who are, uh, you know, obviously up for the challenge of, of pretty much anything that's put on their plate. Um, this is just one more uh, thing that, uh, you know, we're going to have to work on. Uh, it seems like phase one right now, which has started on May 20th, and, um, you know, obviously the attention has been given to restaurants, but uh, other entity retailers are are up and running uh, slowly. some of them are coming online um, others are you know kind of waiting it out and see, seeing how it's going to affect them um, but are making progress uh, as a state and as a country uh, as a whole on uh, not only tackling the COVID pandemic and hopefully um, I know the health district's on on the line now and it's flattening the curve if not bring it uh, we've all done our part. Now it's our part to uh, reopen and, and get the economy back going. I'm glad to see so many people in, on call today that are they're w willing to step up uh, and uh, and get that going for uh, town. So I do appreciate every hard work and dedicate to uh, to, uh, to getting things going in the right direction for us. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Manager, would you like to share a few words? And Pete, um, on my screen, I can just see five people. I don't know if everybody can see the more than five. Maybe it's just my screen. I think you have to, you can, there's an arrow to advance where you could see um, other people, but there's a, over 20 people on the call. Okay, great. Um, Mr. Manager, if you'd like to share a few words. Peter, I can't see if Gary's on the call. Um, are you, is he on the call? He was on the call. Sorry, I'm here. There he I'm is. Here. Okay. Hang on one second. I'm having, uh, apparently I'm having technical difficulties. Hold on. Uh, that's perfect. You told me you were finalizing the budget. Yeah, you know exactly. That. Sorry, I was busy. Can you guys hear me okay? Absolutely. All right, I think I fixed it. Uh, and I'll explain probably why that's happening on my end, but 
I'll, I'll explain that. First of all, thanks to the group for putting this together. I want to echo the mayor's comments um, as well. But uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few brief words. Um, what's going on and probably why my system, I was having issues with my system is I'm actually on a conference call with the State Department of Economic and Community Development at the same time um, and regarding potential financial assistance that the town may be eligible for. So I'm trying my best to be in two places at two times uh, or at the same time. I apologize for that, but uh, this program was booked first and I think it's very important. At the same time, I don't wanna miss an opportunity to capture some revenue from this additional funding from the state uh, on behalf of the town. So uh, first and foremost, again, thanks to the mayor and council for all their support over the last few months. Um, I really appreciate the business community and the residents' patience um, going through all of this. I know it's been very frustrating. Um, I'm glad we're at this point now that we can look, on, uh, look at getting things back online um, not just um, not just for the town's sake, but obviously for the business owners, for their livelihood, and for their employees. Um, businesses are absolutely a greater part of the ecology within this town. It is the local economy. It it's what drives things. We provide, your, your organizations provide goods and services to residents um, that are much needed um, in the community. So we're part of a larger system and we're part of a larger family. So I'm I'm glad we can be having these conversations today. Um, I'm excited to get the town back online and the town's willing to do what they can on their end to help make this process as streamlined as possible. I flipped through the pages a little bit just to see who is here. We have a great internal team and they are represented on this conference call right now. Our job is to review the applications, um, look at permitting opportunities and provide guidance during the process to make sure that we can open as appropriate based off of guidelines and guidance from the state um, as quickly as possible. And uh, as far as town hall, while our doors haven't officially opened yet, staff have throughout this been open and available by phone, by email, now through Zoom um, and other technology to help answer any questions and uh, continue providing services to residents and businesses. So. Um, that being said, I'll, I'll stop talking. I'll let us get to the meat of the meeting and, um, and thank you for logging in. Great, thank you, Mr. Manager. Um, Pete, I'll let you take it uh, from here. Sure, uh, real quickly, um, as we discussed the governor's executive orders, the businesses that are already open are manufacturing, construction, real estate, utilities, uh, those retail establishments that were considered uh, essential, primarily food, uh, and beverages, and then uh, child care and hospitals. Child care uh, establishments are obviously struggling as people are staying home and children don't need the care that they once did, but uh, nevertheless, uh, they are permitted in this first round to, um, to be open. Um, in terms of what's coming up, uh, what's up now, um, uh, and, and why we're here today, uh, restaurants, uh, specifically outdoor, uh, only uh, no bar areas are permitted to be open uh, as of May 20th. Uh, the remaining retail establishments are also allowed to be open. Uh, outdoor recreation offices and the governor is stressing uh, that those who can work from home should continue to do that if at all possible. They wanted that message to be clear. Uh, personal services, uh, hair salons and barbershops uh, are allowed to be open effective June 1st. As everyone's aware, that was pushed out from the May 20th uh, opening day. And then lastly, museums, zoos, we don't have a zoo here in town, so not particularly a uh, local concern. And then lastly, uh, university uh, research establishments. Um, the state has handed down a variety of individual business sector rules that apply to the businesses that are permitted to be open. Uh, primarily, they wanna stress that uh, there will be strict controls imposed on distancing and hygiene uh, safeguards, uh, specifically, uh, they're limiting uh, capacity to establishments to 50 percent. Uh, obviously, strict cleaning and disinfecting protocols uh, must be in place for each business. Uh, once again, those who can work from home, they're stressing, uh, please uh, try to allow that to happen. Uh, once again, uh, those who are in high risk categories, um, are stressing the importance of staying home, uh, staying away from groups. Uh, face masks, uh, as has uh, clearly been discussed in the media, 
uh, should continue to be worn uh, at all times uh, when you're in the public. And then uh, gatherings that are permitted are restricted to a maximum of five people. So if you've gone to any outdoors uh, dining establishments, uh, they will ask you how many are in your group and they are limiting it to five. Uh, importantly, um, for those businesses who are considering opening, uh, the, state, the state has established a self-certification process. Um, so for each business sector, there's a, a different set of rules uh, for self-certification. So if you are uh, considering doing that, please visit this website. Uh, it's the state portal for uh, business uh, reopenings. Uh, the web link is there. We are going to post all of this information on the town website if you uh, don't write this down immediately, but it's important that each business uh, do a self-assessment uh, before they open and make sure they're capable of uh, complying with all of the standards. Uh, additionally, some of those standards, uh, uh, they are stressing the importance of training your employees so that they can uh, provide and stay in compliance with all of the rules that the state has established, uh, making hand sanitizers, available at uh, all uh, entrance points and areas where people will congregate, uh, making sure that your facility uh, is clean and has been disinfected and you're following all of those protocols. Uh, they do ask that a certain amount of signage be posted at your establishment uh, regarding um, things like separating distances and the like. Uh, that information is available uh, on, the, on the website. And then lastly, um, there are some whistleblower protections. So if an employee uh, or a customer uh, sees a violation of some of the standards, uh, there is some protection in place for uh, those folks. Let me try and advance this uh, slide here. There are a whole variety of available resources uh, at your disposal. If you have uh, more specific questions that you need to investigate, uh, we've listed the state uh, of Connecticut uh, coronavirus portal. Uh, that's the address there. That particular uh, website has all of the individual rules for each business sector. So we encourage you to get copies of that. Uh, they're easily accessed and uh, they're very well done in terms of explaining some of the rules for your particular business sector. The town has also established a coronavirus uh, webpage. If you visit the town website, there'll be a red banner at the top. We've deposited all relevant information uh, about the uh, pandemic and some of the rules that we're talking about today. Uh, at that location if you just want to go to the town website and then also uh, our partnering agency the central connecticut health district has also established a lot of that information on their website um, hot off the press or literally within the last few days as the mayor mentioned the governor has released what he's calling the roadmap for reopening connecticut um, we've also provided you with a link to that report it's a pretty lengthy report has a lot of facts and figures about the the issue that we're dealing with and it also has specific industry information and it has information about businesses that uh, will be allowed to open up in the very uh, near future. I think Mark at this time, we're gonna ask Charlie Morrison to jump in here and explain uh, the process that we've set up for businesses uh, who wanna do things on the outside. Good afternoon, everyone. And um, like Peter, I said uh, the, uh, the application for the outdoor dining as it relates to restaurants in town, those are up on the website. Uh, I think recently we have added, or if we have not done so, we're going to be adding a newly created diagram by uh, the engineer, the town engineer, Mr. Derek Greger. He had come up with um, that uh, layout for. Um, for the tables uh, with the social distancing. Uh, we have started to receive some applications in the office and uh, first and foremost in our minds is to make sure that the, the social distances uh, is adhered to. And I know usually it's, it's difficult to talk to the layman about scales and measurements, linear distances and so on. However, uh, nowadays we notice that most people are aware of um, measurements. Most people, every, if not everyone knows what six feet looks like on the ground. So um, the applications are coming in and we have been having a little back and forth with the, um, with the layout. Uh, what we're trying to instill in the applicants is that they should 
give us uh, scale drawings as much as possible where it's possible in it all. Otherwise, if they could give us uh, dimensions, because in absence of a scale uh, drawing, then dimension is critical. So that means we will have that six feet um, distance adhered to. The six feet are being measured from, or I should say, is being measured from the rear of each, the rear or the side of each uh, chair and not just six feet from the tables. So that's one of the main focus that we have here. Also, uh, the sign regulations has been relaxed so that um, each business can have a total, or maybe not a total, but um, no sign shall be more than 15 square feet. And um, these signs are to include things like uh, menu and um, directional signs, uh, safety concerns, and so on. So the, the signs that are going to be allowed is uh, 15 square feet or smaller. And, um, you know, 16 square feet could take a couple of different measurements. They could be a five by three, a seven by 2.15 or a 6.25. I usually like to relate to sign in terms of um, a ply, ply board, a sheet of ply board, as we know, is eight by four. So a half of a sheet of ply board, it cut in any direction would be um, approximately, would be a little more than 15 uh, square feet. So Charles, this, is, this is Mark Charles. Has there been any common issues on the restaurant owners that have submitted applications? Has there been a common issue that they've all uh, had a concern about or something that you needed to get from them that's been kind of a common item? What we realized is that most, for the few applications that we have received, the, um, the chairs and tables are being placed on a uh, area that may not be able to reasonably hold these um, tables and chairs with the six feet uh, distances. This is something that we are gonna be enforcing strictly. And um, there are other requirements too, such as uh, garbage disposal receptacles, um, things like we're asking for things like wearing enough mask, uh, providing hand sanitizers, uh, locations to um, uh, stylish locations to bathrooms, uh, you know, and that sort of thing. So, and regarding of, PPE, have there been any requests or concerns regarding access to PPE and where they can um, they can find it and purchase it? We have not had a concern about that. We have not okay. had an, anything mentioned about that. But um, we're, we're, we're willing to work with the, um, with the restaurant operators. And uh, one of the main things, though, that we want to see is uh, that they call us, once they've laid out these tables and chairs, that we go and get a visual inspection to make sure that it can actually fit in the space, like I said, with that um, six feet social distancing. Because, I mean, you could get something on a paper that says, hey, this is six feet between here and there. And um, in actual fact, when you go on the site, it's, it's not um, what it is on paper. So that's, I think that's very critical that we do go to these locations once they've set up and, and, um, and told and called us that we can go there, look at it, um, I will pull out my tape measure and um, we'll make sure that we have that in place first and foremost. Great, and for those of you on the call that are from the restaurant sector, there will be Q&A uh, once we get through the different slides here. So do hang in there. Um, Charles, is that uh, anything else to share? That's basically it for me. And um, as we're seeing on our screen now, that's the sample sketch plan. Uh, submitted by the engineering department that um, it's a schematic diagram of how the tables is expected to be set up. What, we, what he did was to use a, a two feet square for the table. So a table up against a, ch a chair, whatever the dimension is, if it's a 48 inches diameter or it's a square table, 
Then there's an additional two feet. And uh, two feet is a reasonable uh, space to use for a, for a chair. Mark you, some chairs might be a little more, some might be a little less, but if we use that, I think that's a great rule, that two foot square rule, then um, we should be able to get it. And that's pretty much uh, what I have for this segment. Great, thanks Charles. Derek, you're up. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on what Charles said, yeah, that, that sketch is available online. It's, it's just there as a reference uh, for people to use. A uh, couple of things I just wanted to point out with respect to uh, seating outside is to ensure if you're along a sidewalk that you keep the public sidewalk open. Um, we have to leave that available for public travel. Also, if you're planning any kind of seating in parking areas or areas that are accessible by vehicles, you need to provide um, suitable barriers, which uh, could be concrete uh, barricades. There's going to be, uh, there's some different options, but we need to know what you're proposing to separate vehicles from seating uh, to protect your patrons. With regards to layout, um, you're welcome to contact the engineering division. Uh, what you see on the right side of the screen is uh, one example of a plan that we provided. We can provide that like an aerial photo of your property for you to mark up. Um, we also may have plans on file that are um, accurate and to scale that might help you with the layout. So you're so good, it'll probably help you with the layout and help us in the review process. Um, so we're not just looking at sketches that may, as Charles said, may have dimensions that really don't add up to what's actually out in the field. So uh, feel free to contact the engineering division. Uh, you can call 860-721-2850 and uh, we can uh, find out what you need and see what we have on file and or and do a plan like this uh, through email or mail uh, so you can mark it up and send it back. And are they able, able to scan this and email this to you or do you need a physical copy brought to the office? No, we could take them electronically. Okay. And are emails they posted on the town site if they want to email to you, De Derek, or anybody else? I assume they are. Mark, on this, uh, page, you can see there's a, a, next to Charles' name, temp outdoor activity at weathersfieldct.gov is the, is the address to submit the applications and all the supporting information. It gets automatically routed uh, to all of the staff who are um, going to be involved uh, in uh, reviewing the applications. Great. Thank you, Derek. So as uh, Charles mentioned, um, we've established a, an expedited review process. We have 10 days uh, to review these applications once they come in through that email address that we mentioned. The, the governor's order does allow the use of sidewalks and even parking lots now. Uh, so uh, the, the rules have been dramatically uh, relieved from uh, past practice. Uh, as Charles mentioned, it's uh, uh, vitally important that the six foot separation distance uh, is observed um, it's important to also note that uh, if you do have a restaurant with a bar, the bar is not allowed yet to be open, so it will have to be closed. Um, and then just as I said, uh, these applications will be uh, immediately distributed to the building department, the health department, the engineering department, and the fire marshal's office. Uh, I want to stress that uh, each of these folks is uh, very uh, able and willing to work on an individual basis with applicants if they have questions. Uh, to make sure that uh, at the end of the day, uh, the restaurants are, are allowed to have the dining that they want, but at the same time, the public and employees will be protected uh, to the utmost uh, safety concerns. Um, just a couple of other points that uh, need to be stressed. Uh, there are a whole bunch of separate rules for outside dining. Uh, they are requiring that uh, uh, restaurateurs use rolled and packaged silverware, use single use packets and containers, uh, obviously sanitizing seating areas, tables, and common items af after each seat seating is vitally important. And then lastly, uh, they're, they're suggesting that paper menus be used and disposed of after guests have ordered. So things will be a little bit different. Um, and um, lastly, that uh, where possible, they ask that the restaurants use, you know, chalkboards, whiteboards, um, put the menu uh, on a phone, uh, a web app, or that kind of thing so that uh, uh, there's less opportunity for um, possible uh, contamination.
Uh, Mark, I think uh, at this point, uh, if Steve, uh, our building official, and um, Anthony, our fire marshal, are, are online, then uh, would be a good chance for them to uh, add a few comments. Perfect. Okay, I'll go. I'll go if that's okay. How you doing, everybody? Can you hear me? Yep. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. How you doing? I'm Steve. Um, I just want to remind everybody about um, handicap accessibility. Be aware of that. Um, we have to do something for accommodation. So if it's, it's a, if it's a place and you have high tables, try to bring in some lower tables so somebody in a wheelchair or the elderly or something can, can roll up and, 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 and still enjoy the dining. Um, that I wanted to talk about lighting. If you're doing anything with lighting and you have extension cords, make sure that they're not in a path of travel where they're gonna be a tripping hazard or anything like that. Um, that's pretty, pretty much it. Uh, you know, if it's if it's a tent, if you're doing tents and they're larger than 700 square feet, uh, there will be a building re a building permit required. Um, but like I said, the big thing is handicap accessibility. Make sure that some type of accessibility is provided. Um, if you if you have a door and it's on a gate, make sure that the door is wide enough um, so you could roll wheelchairs in and things like that. It has to be a minimum of 36 inches um, just, just to accommodate um, ADA. Great. Is that it, Steve? That's it. Yeah. Thank you for that, sir. Mr. Sorry. Marshall? Yeah, pretty much our guidelines are similar to the building official. Um, just on the, the tent issue, if you are going to put up a tent, remember a tent is sort of like a temporary structure. So if you put a tent up, we're not going to allow you to have the sides. That's really defeating the purpose of being outside. So it would have to be some type of open tent, just the canopy on top, no sides are permitted. Uh, there was a question a few minutes ago or a statement about PPE. Um, the Connecticut Business and Industry Association has a website and, and a lot of our businesses um, have gone onto that site, ordered masks, thermometers, all that equipment comes to me every Tuesday and myself and my inspector go out and deliver that equipment to the businesses. So it's been pretty successful I believe we've delivered equipment to over uh, 40 businesses in the last two and a half weeks. So our businesses are taking advantage of that. I believe there's still equipment out there or the system is still up and running. This week there was a small malfunction with the state as far as their software. So it was a little delayed, but if you put an order in, we'll get that equipment to you uh, as soon as possible. Also there is from what I see, there is a lot of PP out there in the market, but just like anything else in a free market, the prices are, are up. So again, if you do need more PPE, take advantage of the state site. If you need more PPE, then you're gonna have, you're sort of, you can go on Amazon, a lot of sites to get the equipment, but unfortunately you're paying top dollar right now. And pretty much that's all we have, I have. And you know, once these um, establishments are set up, we will go out and um, with zoning, health and building, we'll go out and check the sites to make sure uh, they meet the intentions of the, uh, of the executive order. Thank you. Thank you, Marshall. Ian from the health district. There we go, trying to take myself off mute here. So yes, most of the things have already been covered, but from our standpoint, for businesses that have been operating with takeout and such, they don't need any particular inspection from us before they start, but businesses that have been closed do require a health inspection before they open up and start serving outdoors. So that's something to be aware of. And I guess I'll just mention that we have been out inspecting these over the last week, and the biggest issues we've been seeing so far is customers coming without a mask and getting rather irate when asked to put a mask on. And also a lot of the staff has been having issues wearing the masks full time. And this is only gonna get worse as the temperature gets warmer. The warmer it gets, the, you know, the more objectionable the mask is. So we'll just have to see as we go here. Anthony, but the mask, quick question. Right, are any of these masks lighter weight than others that you're receiving? Um, are there one that would be more suited for a warmer climate? 
Well, the, the surgical masks are probably the lightest weight ones that we have. They're lighter weight than many of the cloth ones and certainly much lighter weight than in any N95 masks, which are really difficult to breathe in when it's warm. Yeah, the, the, the masks that the state are giving out to businesses are just plain old surgical masks. And like Barb <clears throat> said, those are the light, lightest weight possible. They're lighter than cloth masks or lighter than the N95, the more uh, um, protective PPE. So that's, um, that's what the state's providing right now. Um, to the businesses. Great. Great. Is that it, Barb? That's it. Great. Thank you. So um, we'd like to open this up, uh, which I've, uh, to any of the participants on the on the line with regards to the restaurant side of the business. Um, anybody here from the restaurant side that we can answer some questions for? <clears throat> Uh, yes, if I, if I could ask. My name is Spiro. I'm calling from Heirloom Market. Hi, Spiro. Hi. I just wanted to know, is there a link somewhere for the site that uh, Fire Marshal Vignati mentioned for the PPP equipment? Yes, it's the Connecticut Business and Industry Association. I believe it's cbia.com, yeah. but I can look it up just to verify. I'm pretty sure it's cbia.com, but I'll also check while we the min, uh, meeting continues. Did, did we list that, end up listing that on our website under the coronavirus ID? I'm not sure if it's on there, but we can certainly uh, have Tom do that. All right, thank you so much. That, that was... Uh, that was our question. Thank you. Great. Any other questions from the restaurant community? Okay, I think we're good. Um, I think we Sorry, should... um, Mike, Mike Clark here from Main Street Creamery. Hey, I was, I was uh, unmuting myself there. Um, so just to get some clarity on the mask issue, um, <laughs> One of the mandates that I read from uh, Governor Lamont was that um, basically, you know, you had to wear a mask in public if you were in a situation where um, maintaining six feet of distance was impossible. Like for example, in an Uber or a bus shelter. Um, but the language that, um, that I read was essentially not, um, you know, not that it was absolutely required for the public to wear a mask if they could maintain six feet of social distance. So in, um, in restaurants where things are to go, if it is physically possible for customers to maintain that six feet of distance at all time from other people, including the staff, um, is it the restaurant owner's responsibility to still, um, you know, require people to wear masks, even though six feet of distance could be maintained by customers? Well, I, I can answer to that a little bit. Um, the only thing I would say is if somebody is inside a building, even if they are six feet from everybody else, they're still breathing out and if they're coughing or sneezing or whatever, their germs are going everywhere. So I would say when you're outside, no, you don't need to wear a mask. But inside, it's still a good idea. Right, and so what I'm saying is I, I understand that logically and you know you say still a good idea but what is our like legal responsibility at this point in time based on the current mandates it says that everyone will wear a mask when inside as the okay. owner of the establishment it's not not so much a legal requirement but you're responsible so you you it's you have, that's private property, so you have a right not to serve the person. I mean, unfortunately, sometimes these things may become, um, some people may get irate or not happy, but if it's in your building, pretty much you're responsible. So if someone comes in your building and is not wearing a mask, and like Barbara said, if they're coughing and sneezing, they're spreading the germs around and they could contaminate your employees. 
Sure. No, I, I understand that logically, but um, just wanted clarification on what was legally required at this point, because, you know, obviously people are, um, you know, tensions are high and, you know, we're going to have complaints one way or the other, whether we're requiring everybody or, um, you know, turning people away or w whatever the case may be. Um, and, you know, it's just like, if, if I have, um, you know, predominantly teenage staff tasked with dealing with, um, you know, telling people that they can't enter if they don't have a mask on. And it's, you know, almost daily that they're getting yelled at. It's really, you know, a challenging situation. Is there a, um, do you have any uh, signage prior to the, uh, I've been one of your patrons there and I, I know, know your setup. People have to wait outside as they go in. Is there any, do you have signage outside, like no mask? you know unfortunately we can't serve you uh, type of thing to, to we do have signage outside in a couple of different places um but the language on the signage says uh you know please wear a mask it doesn't say you know you need to or else we won't serve you at this point i guess if i can chime in this is spiro again um it kind of, uh, it makes it almost easier for the business owner and the employees in the business if it was either a rule or not a rule. Yeah. You know, if it, if it just was like, listen, the state or the town says this is what we have to do. There's not even a reason to discuss it beyond this. And then you avoid the confrontation. And yeah. I guess that's where it kind of, it's a little gray and it does open up the opportunity for just that kind of the complication either you know just uh and especially like you said you know you have younger younger people working here it's it's a lot for them especially if uh, the person can be rather if it's an intimidating person or if they're kind of aggressive but yeah it would it would be a relief if it was just one or the other obviously it's not something we can kind of do right here during this meeting but it would yeah. be it would be a relief for sure well I, yeah. if I can if i can chime in for a second and i think uh my building inspector can back me on this we're two gentlemen that enforce state laws, and believe it or not, even with enforcement, people still violate those laws. So, again, I, I would just stress that you, you know, through your signage or just have your employees tell them that, you know, you must, you're always going to get someone who's going to disagree with it. And, I mean, you're going to have to handle those on a case-by-case -case basis, but you can say, you know, the town is requiring us to have ma masks, but you're still going to have someone come in there and say, well, I don't want to do it. Yeah, you would likely, but I agree with Spiro that, that it would take the onus off of us. Um, you know, especially like in this climate, we, we see businesses being boycotted, um, you know, bigger businesses than ours because they're requiring people to wear masks. And there are, you know, then, then there are the ADA issues as well um, that I'm asking my employees to, to navigate, you know, dealing with. But um, yeah, I mean, like if it were a state mandate or a town mandate that I agree, that would make things a lot easier. So just help me here. Where is the gray area then, uh, Pete or, or Anthony? Isn't doesn't it say that you must wear a mask and can't uh, as these business owners enforce that from the state of Connecticut? The, guide, the guidelines do say that um, I don't have it in front of me, but um, it's certainly something we can um, get some additional information on. I know New York just today, the governor passed an executive order uh, mandating it. Uh, I don't think the Connecticut governor has gone that far yet, but it may be something uh, that uh, uh, obviously it's a it's a touchy subject, so that may be something that we'll see more information on coming up very shortly. I agree. You have to deal, as you guys as business owners, you have to deal with customers that are, you know, all they want is a, is a nice cup of coffee or some ice cream to make their day go by. You don't want to add any torture to them. But I think from a signage perspective, you probably want to be as direct, as diplomatically direct as you can be um, with regards to that. And Peter, if we have anything that we can supply them um, uh, from the state perspective, um, Anthony, I thought we talked that it was mandatory um, that masks had to be worn uh, in any retail 
uh, settings. Yeah, I'm looking up the law right now. Just give me a minute. Okay. Um, but I, uh, I feel for you guys, you don't want to get your customers upset, but um, we'll see if we can provide you with the actual language uh, to support any signage that you might have to put out um, to be very specific with your potential customers on, you know, to protect them and, and others. It, um, the state requires you to wear a mask type of thing. It's yeah, the, the, the last language that I saw, it, it said that people should wear masks in public. Um, but hmm. again, it wasn't, you know, it, it only said they must be worn if six feet of distance cannot be maintained. So if there is different language and a different mandate that I'm unaware of, I would appreciate knowing about it for sure. Okay, well, maybe I can step in here. So in the reopen Connecticut for the restaurant sector uh, rules, it does say, yep. Customers are required to bring and wear masks or cloth face coverings that completely cover the nose and mouth unless doing so would be contrary to his or her health and safety due to a medical condition or when eating in the restaurant. There you go. Okay. Required. All right. Um, give me one second. That was for under... Um, outdoor restaurants, right? It says yes. restaurants outdoor only? Correct. Okay. If I'm, um, me, if I may offer a quick suggestion. Is the caller gone? No, I'm here. I'm just okay. looking if for I'm, the uh, I'm, information. If I may, Mr. Chairman, offer a quick uh, word of advice here. Uh, I, I know that um, from experience, some people may arrive at these places and they may genuinely forget to wear a mask and then they are frustrated and having to, to be turned away. Uh, a good solution would be to, um, if you could, and I don't know what the cheapest mask prices are, but if you could have masks and say to, to a person, um, would you like a mask? You know, that probably would help to some degree. Yeah, no, we do have uh, inexpensive masks for sale also and face coverings. You know, we started carrying bandanas to sell. Um, but just looking for the language that you mentioned, just so I have it in front of me here. Um, it's like the, the third page from the end in that section. Up on the top, it says personal protection. I'm going to the self-certify section here. Uh, no? Yeah. Okay, I'm on the correct document now. And which page did you say? Well, it's the third one from the end. So I'm, there are no page okay. numbers on it. Okay, yeah, I'm there. About page seven, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I'm there. Um, Okay, customers are required to bring and wear masks or cloth face coverings that completely cover the nose and mouth unless doing so would be contrary to his or her health or safety due to a medical condition or when eating in the restaurant. So, so they would have to wear it to order food, but when they're outside eating, obviously, they wouldn't have to wear it. That's as I read it, correct? Correct. Okay. Once they buy, they can sit on one of those benches in front of your place and eat ice cream without a mask. Right. It's hard to eat ice cream with a mask anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. 
Okay. Well, I'm glad we got that. So, I'm glad we got that issue. Um, yeah. If you also, if you look at the retail and malls, it says the same verbiage is there too. So if they're entering your building, they have to have a mask on. All right. I will use that language. I'm just going to copy it directly from the uh, from this uh, document and post it online as well as at the. Uh, at the shop. So thank you. Great. Perfect. Great. So um, any other questions from the restaurant community? All right, great. Why don't we move on to uh, salons and spas? Um, if that would be helpful, Peter. Yep, let me do that. Okay. Um, Obviously, June 1st, we, we discussed uh, hair salons and barbershops uh, may uh, open for business. Um, they are establishing a 50% capacity, which is common with uh, almost all of these business uh, reopenings. Uh, they are requiring by appointment only. Uh, they are indicating that waiting rooms um, uh, should be closed or shall be closed. And then they are limiting the services that uh, they can offer as it relates to the face mask availability. Um, I will uh, maybe leave it at that. Uh, if the health uh, district wants to provide uh, any additional input on that, um, now, now would be the time. Okay, well that covers a lot of it anyway. Of course, we're waiting to see how this goes when they open. But, uh, you know, basically opening at 50% capacity probably may mean using every other chair and not everyone. Um, they are limited to hair and actually eyebrows they can do. Uh, we've had a couple questions about eyebrow threading and eyebrow waxing, but those are okay uh, as of the first. Um, they need to provide a clean cape between each client. So places have had to uh, invest in additional capes. Uh, they ask the employees to wash their hands as soon as they come in before they sit down. And obviously the stylist should also be washing their hands between uh, clients. Um, not too much else with that. Obviously just the standard disinfection. Uh, one of the biggest questions we've had from stylists, uh, the regulations say that all employees shall wear face masks or cloth face coverings and face shields. And people want to know, do they really need a face shield? Or if they wear prescription glasses, can they wear those instead? And the answer is no, you do need the face shield. So that has been our biggest question that we've had from people. But I think that's about it. And just making sure that all laundry is done with a sanitizer, which is usually either bleach or like a Lysol laundry sanitizer and dried on the hottest possible setting so that we can disinfect towels and capes. That's about it. Barbara, there was some confusion that I had uh, received a couple of questions about blow drying hair. Yes, first they said no blow drying. Then they said uh, blow drying is okay, but only do it if you really, really have to, that kind of a thing. So right now blow drying is allowed, but not recommended. Uh, Barbara, one other question. Do, does each uh, barbershop or salon have to get a, a, an inspection from you to be certified to open? How, how is that process working? No, they can go ahead and open up. Okay. And we will be making the rounds and inspecting as we go. I guess now would be the time if anyone, um, any stylists or barbers have any questions about any of that, uh, please feel free to, to jump in here. Okay, doesn't seem like we've got any uh, offers there. Uh, we'll, we'll move on at this point. Uh, retail establishments, uh, all remaining retailers are allowed to be open, including malls. Uh, once again, they've applied the 50% rule. 
Uh, they do have some specific um, new standards for the use of fitting rooms. Um, they do require that, uh, as, as you've seen in, in many uh, open retailers, uh, social distance marking on the floor or in some way uh, to provide the six foot separation distance. Uh, they are asking that partitions be put up not only between the, um, the tellers and the customers, but also between employees if, if they have to work in close proximity to each other. And then lastly, uh, they are still uh, encouraging stores to have special hours for vulnerable populations early in the morning or whenever they feel it's appropriate uh, for the elderly uh, or those with underlying uh, health conditions to consider that. So um, in addition to all of the other um, sanitary provisions, uh, cleaning provisions, uh, these are some of the unique requirements uh, for retail establishments. Any questions from retailers on um, retail requirements? Okay, we'll, we'll move on then uh, as well. Mark, did I lose you out there? No, I'm here. Okay, feel free to jump in here. Yeah, um, I wanted to give a, um, uh, an opportunity for Deb Raymond uh, to share. Um, Deb, I know that you've been a great conduit for us on getting the messages out to the business community. Um, let us know if you think um, another one of these events uh, would be helpful for anybody who may have not been able to make this one. Um, this one is being recorded. So we might be addressing some of the issues um, uh, from some people who may not been able, may have not been able to make uh, this particular forum. Um, am I missing anything else, Pete? Um, uh, but Deb, if you'd like to share something, I'd love to have you share. The only other quick, real quick, is that there are a couple of other uh, uh, providers out there who are allowed to open. If I can um, find the arrow here, um, museums and zoos. Um, primarily outdoor activities are permitted um, and they require many of the same requirements for um, retailers as well. Uh, outdoor recreation is another uh, pr provision that uh, they are allowing. So someone who might want to do one-on-one -on -one training um, as long as they're outdoors and they maintain distancing uh, is permitted. Uh, golf is permitted. Uh, we do have a boat tour operator. Uh, he, he could theoretically operate, but he would be limited to five passengers. Uh, things like outdoor shooting ranges and sport fishing uh, are also allowed to be open uh, as of uh, the June 20th deadline. Um, and here we are back to the chamber slide. Um, well, thank you. I, I'm glad to have this opportunity to um, introduce myself to people who I have not been able to meet since I just took this position over. Um, I've been trying to get out to all our members to meet them personally, which has been difficult in uh, the situation we're in, but um, I've met some great people and the unity in this community is just fabulous. I'm, I'm enjoying seeing that. Um, the Chamber is a great organization to, for networking and that's what we've been trying to do is network with each other to keep our businesses going and, and to help each other with that. Um, I just want to say that if you have any questions, email me at the chamber. I mean, it, you know, things change every day as everybody can attest, you know, what is true one day may not be true another day. So as you're trying to get your businesses up and running, email me the question. And if I don't know the answer, which I probably won't, uh, I can find the answer for you. Uh, I can make the calls and that's where I think I can be beneficial. Um, the other thing that I think would be is would be great right now is for uh, to, to we were reestablishing business after hours. Um, with the warmer weather, we can do safe dis distancing with that, and we have a couple planned. Um, to, and so that's going to let everybody know that you know you're open, you're running. If, if you have any specials you have going on, anything you want blasted out, please feel free to uh, rely on the chamber because you know we're here for you. Great. Thank you, Deb. You're welcome. Peter, anything else, sir? Just a, a, um, a couple of um, uh, upcoming attractions, let's say, in terms of the governor's recent announcements. Uh, this is a list of uh, what we anticipate 
uh, will open on June 20th. Uh, you can see I've put a question mark there because it's obviously uh, based on uh, the trends uh, in testing and uh, in hospitalizations and such. So if uh, uh, the downward um, slide reverses itself, uh, this, this could certainly change. But as you can see on this list, uh, there's a big uh, variety, large variety of, of business activities that will uh, knock on wood, be able to open um, on June 20th. Um, th there is a, a report that the governor put out that we, we mentioned a little bit uh, earlier. Um, that you should get a copy of and take a look at. It has a lot more detail on a lot of these things than this simple slide has, but uh, lots of things uh, on the horizon. Uh, additionally, uh, he's hinted at phase three, which would be four weeks uh, theoretically after the June date. Uh, at that point, uh, they are uh, anticipating allowing bars uh, to open, uh, indoor event space and venues, uh, indoor amusements, and then outdoor events up to 100 people. So uh, I'm sure there will be uh, provisos attached to every one of those, but nevertheless, there is uh, some light on the, on the horizon for uh, additional business openings uh, in the next uh, uh, two months or so. So I wanted to make sure everyone is aware of, of those things that are on the horizon. Great, and uh, there we are. Um, great. Pete, I've got nothing else. If that concurs or anything, I guess the only other thing, Deb, is let us know, other than this, we'll make this recording uh, to you, available to you. I think anybody on, on that got on the call will email you a copy of this PowerPoint, uh, which has the different um, links to different areas. I think that might be helpful for you guys as well. Um, thank you for participating, and uh, we appreciate your time, and, uh, and um, welcome to reopening. Um, and thank you again. Thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you guys for hosting. Very informative. Very informative. Thank you. Thank you for all this information. Thank you. You're welcome.